signing, do, 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 they're signing and you have the next document in your hand, okay? So as you pull this away, you are sitting this one down, like an even transaction, okay? They're signing, boom, you got the next document right here, ready to go for them to sign, okay? What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Ashley D'Andrea, and I am back with another notary loan signing video for you today. So, as promised, I told you guys that I would make a video and let you know how I complete my signings in 20 to 30 minutes. But today, I just want to tell you guys some of the ways, some of my verbiage on how I explain certain documents and then pretty much tell you how I prep and so that I can just let you know, you know, kind of the fastest way for me, um, how I get through these signings in 20 to 30 minutes, okay? Now, I do also wanna say that if this is your first time on my channel, welcome. And if this is not your first time on my channel, welcome back, okay? So let's just get into this video, y'all, because y'all are here because your sis is about to drop some gems for y'all, okay? And why? Because we are gonna stay booked, blessed, and busy. All right, y'all, so I do have some notes down here. Um, if y'all see me looking down, it's because I got notes. But just bear with me and stay with me for, you know, this video, okay? But the very first thing that I want to talk to y'all about, and I'm not even gonna touch on this subject for a super long time, but the first thing I wanna tell you is, you watching this video because either you're getting ready to be a notary loan signing agent, you're already a notary loan signing agent, um, you're just starting out or, you know, you have everything and you just kind of want to get some background on actually being a notary loan signing agent. But I am in these different Facebook groups, okay? And I see people asking questions on how to fill out a general notarization form. Like, before the word loan, in loan signing agent before the word loan it is notary you guys we are a notary public first we are a commissioned notary public first okay so just remember that you are a commissioned notary public so before you even get into actual loan documents you need to make sure that you know how to fill out an acknowledgement a juror a witness form even an affidavit like you need to know how to fill that out you need to learn the verbiage for your state so that you can properly fill those out because that is what will get you in trouble in the long run if you do not know how to fill these out you will be coming back people will be sending you stuff back and we just don't want to get into that now basically the reason that i'm telling y'all this first is because throughout a loan document package there are multiple notarizations in there that you have to complete as a notary public, okay? Not as a loan signing agent, but as a notary public. So you need to know how to fill those out. Now, not every state requires you to actually take a course on knowing how to fill out general notarization forms. So the NNA does have, they do have a course that you can take, which is called, I have it here on the wall, it's called Notary Essentials. Now here in Indiana, we had to take the test. Like we have to know how to fill out a general notary form before we can even be commissioned. So I'm telling you all of this just to say that if your state does not require you to do some sort of training to be an actual notary public, then go to the NNA website and take that course. I don't know how much it costs. It's not even a hundred dollars, like 40, 50 bucks. It will benefit you. Okay. Cause you need to know how to fill out a general notarization. Now, the first thing when you actually get to a signing, you need to get their driver's license. You need to look at the driver's license. Number one, make sure that the photo on there matches the person who's actually sitting in front of you. You need to make sure that it has their address and all that information on there. And you need to make sure that it is valid. Now, I'm not sure what other states' requirements are, but for the state of Indiana, they can have a driver's license or an identification card that is expired, but it cannot be expired for more than three years. So I'm checking the signer's driver's license ID card to make sure that it is valid, or if it is expired, it's not expired more than three years. And let's flip. I'm get to a blank page. And I'm filling in my journal, y'all. 
But remember, they're only signing, look at me, they're only signing right here, okay? So everything else is for you to fill out. So if if you got time and you actually don't want to, um, you don't want to fill everything in, just have them sign the journal. Put their address in. You have their driver's license. And remember, you're supposed to send a copy of the driver's license back with the document. So you have that copy of it. So, you know, just fill in their driver's license number. You know, the I always put the driver's license number, their date of birth, and when it actually expires. Um, especially if it's like a husband and wife, you want to fill in the driver's license information. But as far as their address go, just put the address in city and state and zip for one of them because they both got the same information. Okay, now one of them don't, you know, whatever. Just fill it in. Do your journal. One thing I want to say about the journal is some people pre-fill in their journal. Some people do not pre-fill in their journal. I have never pre-filled in my journal, but the one time that I did... The appointment got canceled. So, I am not a big fan of pre-filling out your journal, but... You can, but just know that if that appointment get canceled, you just took up a space or two spaces, you know, that you actually could have filled in, okay? So just know to make sure you fill out your journal first. Never forget to do your journal. Never do your journal last because you will forget. Do your journal first. So the number one big thing for me on how I can actually get through a signing fast is prepping. I pre-notarize every notarization throughout those documents. Now, if you get a packet late and you get it the same day, you may not have time to pre-notarize everything because you already have a full day or you just took a last minute signing. So you don't have time, you know, to put your sign here, stickers on there. You don't have time to pre-notarize stuff and that's okay. But if you get your documents the day before you're closing, the day before you're supposed to sign, however y'all want to word it, pre-notarize because that is less time at the table that you have to sit there and you are actually filling in information because the signers don't want to see you filling in stuff. They really don't. Like one time I was filling a notarization and they like clicking the pen, twirling it, tapping on the table. And I'm like, damn, they must want me to hurry up. So pre-notarize your paperwork. All right, guys. So I am just going to show you quickly here how to correctly fill out an actual individual acknowledgement. This acknowledgement is from the National Notary Association. And when you actually fill out an acknowledgement or a juret within a loan signing, they don't actually look like this. And it's actually probably nine times out of 10 printed already for you, but there are still places where you have to fill it out. Now, by law, you cannot, I repeat, by law, you cannot actually sign your name or place your stamp so that's why i placed this orange x in a highlighter and place a line through where you actually sign your name because you are going to want to fill out everything on this list um all the blanks except for actually signing your name and placing your stamp because you're going to do that in front of the signers by law you cannot sign and you cannot place your stamp without being in front of the signers so let's just jump right into this so this is an individual acknowledgement, okay? The very top of your acknowledgement, you're always gonna place this, put down the state that you are in. I am in Indiana. You're gonna put down the county where you are actually in when the when this acknowledgement was actually filled out, okay? So the county that you are in when you actually fill this out, if you are 30 minutes away from your house, 45 minutes away from your house, that is the county that you need to place there. If you are not aware of what county you are in, ask the signer. They know what county they live in. Nine times out of 10, you're at their house, right? So they know what county they live in. So anyway, you're going to do the state. You're going to put the county that you're in. And then it says on this, the day of blank, blank, before me, blank, the undersigned no republic personally appeared, blank. So let's start with the date because that's what goes in these blanks. We're going to put the day. We're going to put the month and we're going to put the year, okay? Whenever you see these words that say before me, okay, you guys see that? Before me. Whenever you see the words before me, it is always your name, okay? Remember that. Whenever you see the words before me, it's always your name. Sometimes you may see before me and it may not even have a space for you to put your name. Don't worry about it. But if it says before me blank, 
It is what? The name of the notary public, your name, okay? You are there as a notary public before you are there as a loan signing agent. So before me, you put your name. I just put Ashley Smith and it will be your name, like I said. And then you put the undersigned notary public personally appeared. Personally appeared is the person who's signing. The person who is there in front of you who gave you their ID. They personally appeared in front of you, okay? Name of signers. This is why I actually love this um, acknowledgement and the giraffe from the National Notary Association because they literally tell you how to fill this out, okay? So personally appeared is always the name of the signers. And then usually in your loan documents, it doesn't give you the spot to check whether they personally were known to you or if they proved like by who they are with their ID. But on this one, it does. But anyway, usually you just put their name and then boom, 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 they acknowledge the execution of this document is usually what it will say, okay? Now, down here, like I said, where it says for you to sign, for not saying, where it says for you to sign the signature of the notary public, you do not sign, you do not stamp, okay? You sign and you stamp when you are actually in front of your signers at the table signing their documents, Okay. Underneath that, you can print your name and you can also place when your commission expires. That's okay. You can print your name and place that. Just don't sign and don't stamp, okay? So state of Indiana, County of Adams, on this, the 10th day of March, 2021, before me, my name, name of Notary Public, Ashley Smith, the undersigned Notary Public, personally appeared, Jane Doe, name of the signer, personally appeared is always the person who's signing, and then you would check one of those boxes and fill everything else in. This down here says optional, so I'm not even worried about that. It only says if you're performed in the state of Arizona, which I am not. So I don't usually fill that in, but nine times out of 10, when I'm out doing general notary work and I fill out one of these, I actually do fill this out and put down the title of the document, um, the date of the document and how many um, pages it was. I actually do fill that in. It's not required, but I just do it. So... There you have it, guys. This is how you fill out an individual acknowledgement. Whenever you see one and it just says signed and sworn before me, that's a jurat, okay? Signed and sworn is always a jurat, but this is an actual individual acknowledgement. So I hope if you guys did not know how to fill out an acknowledgement, now you know. Boom. Make sense? I hope y'all following along with me. Thanks. So you are going to have your own verbiage when you are actually sitting at the table with the signers and completing a loan signing. Now, I got the verbiage sheet from Kendra and I looked over it and I actually used some of her verbiage when I first started out, but I kind of found ways to explain things easier for me. And even now being with the title company, um, I learned new ways on how to explain things as well. well I'm just going to show you just a few like main forms that I can give you some good verbiage with. Now, when it comes to like the signature name affidavits and things like that, you know, hey, this is your signature name affidavit. This is just saying that you are one and the same person. You know, if it has other names on there that they may have gone by or, you know, they came up when they did their credit report, uh, when they ran their credit report, you know, some papers, they want them to actually sign how their name is printed on every single line and some don't. So just make sure you fill it out how it states to have it filled out, okay? So one of the number one things that you want to make sure that you actually say to the signers before you even get into the documents is that I am here merely as a loan signing agent to present the documents to you and have you sign and then I'll return them. I can tell you what you are signing, but I cannot tell you why you're signing it. I can tell you what you're signing, but I cannot tell you why you're signing it. One more time, I'm going to say this, guys. I can tell you what you're signing, but I cannot tell you why. I can give you a brief description of the document, but I cannot tell you why you're signing the document. The more and more that you guys actually get into these documents, you're going to come up with your own verbiage, okay? So the first thing, I'm just showing y'all these papers because I don't know how to actually um, get it like up on the screen. Like I know how to do a picture in picture, but let's just go with it. So this first one here is a notice of right to cancel, okay? Y'all see that? This is a notice of right to cancel. So with the notice of right to cancel, you're basically just going to say, this is your notice of right to cancel. Legally, you have three business days that you can cancel on this loan. If you do choose to cancel with the loan, the, the form actually explains to you how to cancel, 
okay? You don't need to go into telling them how to cancel because the form tells them how to do that. So, but you're going to tell them, you know, the form tells you how to cancel, but today we're just going to acknowledge receipt of me actually giving you this form, okay? Because if you see right there at the bottom, it says acknowledgement of receipt. And this is where they're going to sign. They're going to sign there. They're not going to sign where it says I wish to cancel. They're signing where it says acknowledgement of receipt, and then you're going to put the date on there. You can either let them date it or you can date it yourself. If the signer is actually signing their name on here, on their first document or whichever document that you're on, when they're ready to sign, you need to make sure that you got the next paper ready to go, okay? They're signing, do, 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 do. they're signing and you have the next document in your hand, okay? So as you pull this away, you are sitting this one down, like an even transaction, okay? They're signing, boom, you got the next document right here, ready to go for them to sign, okay? Like. The small talk, no. You can do small talk if you want to, but it's going to just cause for more time at the table and you're trying to get in and get out. Get in and get out. Now, first, this is the auto settlement statement. Now, this form, I got some little stickies on it because um, this is the actual real form. And so I wanted to cover up the signer's name because I don't have software on my computer where I can put in Jane Doe or signer, X signer, one signer, two. So this is a real form. But when you're explaining the auto settlement statement, now you can either do the auto settlement statement first or you can do the closing disclosure. I get a lot of forms and the auto settlement statement is like the very first page. So when I explain the auto settlement statement, I just say, this is your auto settlement statement. Over here is a breakdown of your credits and your debits. Right here is your new loan amount. Here are your loan charges. Here is your impound. Your impound is your new escrow account. Here are your title charges and the escrow settlement charges. Right here is your government recording and transfer charges. And over here are your payoffs, okay? Right here at the bottom of that, where whichever space that it's in, once they pay or once they get their refund back, the credit and the debit is gonna equal to be the same. So my verbiage, what I would usually say when I get to the end is, you know, once you get that refund back of $102, that's gonna make your credit and debit equal out to be the same. And if you are okay with this form, hold on. And if you're okay with this, you're gonna sign here. Closing disclosure. Everybody knows what a closing disclosure looks like, okay? When I'm explaining the closing disclosure, all I say is, this is your closing disclosure. You should have already received a copy of this. Here are your loan terms. Here's your projected payments. This is gonna be your new monthly payment with escrow and taxes. Down here is the cash to close. The last page of the closing disclosure, this is where they're gonna sign, okay? They sign, they date, or you date because it's already predated. Here is your note. Your note is the borrower's promissory to pay. Here is your loan amount, your interest rate, and your first payment is due on April the 1st. I do like to point out on the note that people, for people that you have between the 1st and the 15th to actually pay on your loan. Now, even though it's due on 1st, okay? But they have between the 1st and the 15th to pay on the loan before they accrue interest. So I always like to point out that portion in um, that section that lets them know, it's usually on the second page, that lets them know that they have between the 1st and the 15th to pay. And if they don't pay by the 15th, they're gonna accrue either 4 or 5% interest on top of that payment that's due for that month. So once I tell them that, I usually say, everything sounds good to you, you're gonna sign here. And then I just point. Always keep your pen in your hand so that you can just point for them easily so it's not your finger, you know, all up in their face and you can just easily point for them. Now for other states, they have what's called a deed of trust, but for the state of Indiana, ours is called a mortgage. So a lot of people know what the deed of trust is. So when I explain the documents, I say, this is your mortgage, which is also known as a deed of trust, okay? I don't actually have a mortgage paper that's in front of me. All I have is the one that I got from Miss Kendra, which says deed of trust on it. But in the state of Indiana, all of ours say mortgage right here. They don't say deed of trust. So I say to them, this is your next document, which is your mortgage, also known as a deed of trust. This document shows you as the owner of record on the property, and it also lets you know that your lender has a security interest in the property. Make sure that they check to make sure that the spelling of their name is correct. All right, y'all, so I know that this video was kind of all over the place, but this was kind of stressful and hard for me to do. Like, I kind of feel like now that I should have just done like a mock signing 
so that I could have like, you know, have all the paperwork in front of me and, you know, had somebody sitting across from me so I could just kind of go back and forth. So, you know, if y'all want to see me do a my tiny, let me know down in the comments. But um, I hope you guys <laughs> got the gist of everything from this video. I hope I explained it. Oh. I hope I explained everything to where you guys actually understood and could follow along with me because I know that I was getting tongue-tied and I know that I probably said how to explain each document or told y'all something like 10 times but you only just seen it once, okay? I'm recording this video going on an hour now. So yes, y'all, your girl has struggled a little bit but that's okay. I told y'all I was going to upload this video, so I hope this is some good content. I hope you guys understand it. Like I said, make sure you guys do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I will be coming back with some more notary content. I'm not sure what my next video will be, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Y'all just stick with me, and I will catch y'all in the next video. I keep messing up and I'm getting tongue tied. Y'all, this was a lot harder than what I thought this was gonna be. <laughs> to tell y'all how I actually do signings in 20 to 30 minutes.